Let's get started. I'll yep. start off by introducing uh, Professor Shaw to our um, students in the class. Professor Shaw is, among other things, a Pegasus professor. He's one of the most cited authors in the history of UCF, if not the most cited. Uh, world authority on computer vision. And as he explained computer vision to me, it's uh, what you do after you finish image processing. And for our class, uh, it would be the kind of stuff that goes on in the um, visual cortex of the brain that takes the information that we get and uh, gives us a, a perception of the scene. So without further ado, Professor Shaw, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, MJ. Uh, good morning. Um, all the students, can they hear me clearly? And do they see the uh, slide, first slide computer vision? Yes, I see. All right. Okay. Okay, good. So um, you guys have been um, listening, um, learning about human vision. So this uh, talk is going to be about computer vision. So basically, uh, we want to um, talk about how we can make computers to able to see. So we will talk about how to develop algorithms and programs that given an input image and computer can analyze an image. And so um, it deals with recovery and use of information about objects present in the scene. And um, computer vision also called uh, image understanding, machine learning, uh, vision, robot vision, image analysis, uh, video understanding, and so on. So image understanding means that we are given an image. We want to identify what is in the image, identify objects, their structure, spatial arrangement, and relationship with objects by a computer program. Um, so as they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. So you human, when you look at this picture, you can um, see that while well, there people are grieving and there is you know, a grave there and there's some bad event happen, uh, some suicide bombing and so on. You bring in a lot of knowledge and you can analyze this image. So challenge is how can computer be able to do that? So, so far we are able to do this. Given an image like this, computer can automatically generate this caption. So we'd say the man in gray swings a bed while the man in black looks on. So which, you know, which, which is not bad, which is pretty good. This is another example, a big bus sitting next to a person. So generated by a computer. So um, video understanding deals with the video, which is a sequence of images. There we want to detect objects, track objects from frame to frame, and recognize activities and actions. So um, as it says, the word is worth a thousand pictures. So this is a video, it's not a thousand pictures, but you know, quite a few pictures. And when we play that, it, it's a video, and we can describe uh, this also by one word, uh, which is basically hunt. So there's a, picture of a you know, video of a hunt. So computer vision has a lot of applications, you know, biometrics, you can do face recognition and other things. Uh, video surveillance monitoring, um, biomedical image analysis, uh, multimodal video retrieval, visual inspection, human computer interface, remote sensing, computer graphics, robotics, self-driving cars, and many, many other applications. So in this talk, I'm going to focus on two main parts. So one is I'll give you a very general introduction about computer vision. Second is I will quick give you a quick overview of our research. So um, in the introduction, I'll talk about different terminology we use for image and video, and also image formation and shape from X. And overview of our research, uh, I'll split that in two parts. One is a classical computer vision, which we have been using for many decades, and other is a recent uh, interest in neural network or deep learning. So let's get started with image and video terminology. So image is a 2D area of numbers. So it's a matrix uh, of numbers, and uh, each um, number 
respond correspond to the intensity value or gray levels. And each element in the image called pixel or picture element. So gray levels are when the zero is a black and 255 is white and gray is you know, any number between them is gray. So color image is three the two dimensional arrays. So we have red, green, and blue. And um, then resolution of image can vary from 256 by 256 to all the way to uh, 1000 by 1000, like a megapixel picture or even more than one megapixel picture. So um, the simplest case of image is a binary image. Uh, that is the black and white. So uh, each pixel is zero or one or zero or 255. Gray, grayscale image is, you know, each pixel can be zero to 255. And the color is, you know, we have three colors, red, green, and blue. So uh, like this is example of binary image. So we look at here an image and um, now that correspond to Q rows and P columns. So corresponding each pixel here, we will have either one or zero. If it's a black, it will be zero. If it's white, it's, a, it's one. So very simple image. The next is more realistic image with a gray level image. So again, we have these rows and columns. So that's a matrix or array, we call it in computer programming. So again, here, the zero to 255. So zero is black and 255 is white. And number between them is gray. And the color images, we have three channels, the blue one, the green one, and the red one. So um, so if you look at an image like this, and if you look at this little P surface, and if you blow that up, it will look like that. And then if you look at actual numbers, the numbers looks like that. So what computer has to see is these numbers. And so looking at these numbers, it has to determine that this is a piece of a sweater which a person is wearing. So it's a very complex and challenging task. So there are different formats of images. You must be familiar with JPEG and TIFF and so on. Now video is sequence of images. So you typically have 30 frames or 30 images in a second. And these are different formats, AVI, MPEG and so on. Um, so this is a video clip and this uh, has 16 frames, 16 images. So now, uh, so far we have been talking about um, uh, electro-optical images, the visible in the images which are taken by visible pen, the regular camera you guys have. Um, but there are other images, you know, you might have heard this infrared images, uh, which uh, can actually determine the temperature that, you know, uh, something's hot or cold, you know, that give you, and that will work also at night. Other images are depth images, where it will, the intensity here will be a distance from a camera to that object as compared to light, light reflected electro-optical images. So then there are LIDAR images, uh, um, light detection and ranging, like a radar, the sound, audio, uh, wave, and here we have light, and you can get also fine clouds, so it gives you 3D information directly. But we will focus on visible band uh, electro-optical images. So um, now let's talk about the image formation and shape from X. So the image, in order to form an image, we need a light source. Uh, if there's no light, we cannot take an image. It's completely dark. Second is, of course, we need a camera. And camera has some intrinsic parameter, like a focal length, uh, extrinsic parameter, where the camera is located, what's orientation. And of course, there has to be scene, there has to be objects and their reflectance and surfaces. Um, so simplest model of camera is what is called pinhole camera. So if you look at here, this is a camera and the lens is modeled by a pin, small hole here. And this is the plane, image plane of a camera. So we have an object like a candle here. So ray of light hits this and goes through the lens or pinhole and it hits the image plane and image form here. So another ray of light comes from here and it's formed here. And similarly, another light of ray hit here and formed here. So as you see, the image actually is formed upside down and that's the, that's the effect of light. Even your, your image in your eyes form upside down and you learn how to you know, invert it. 
So, um, so now this is called a perspective projection. So this relates to how you can take a point in 3D, which is X, Y, Z, and uh, take a picture of that in this one here and get some image coordinate, which are small x, small y, and uh, the world coordinates are x, y, z. So they are model, uh, they depend on the focal length, which is the distance from the image plane to the lens. And that depends also from the Z, which is called depth from lens to the object. So if you look at these two triangles are equ equivalent triangles. So we can use this fact and come up with a relationship. So here, other thing, as I said, the image of this is formed upside down. So this will become minus small y. And so this side of a triangle, and this side of a triangle are equivalent. So we can say minus y, a uh, capital Y. And then with another side, which is F, is a focal length. And then corresponding side of this triangle is Z. So we get this relationship and we can rearrange <coughs> and then talk about the small y, which is the uh, y image coordinate is given by the focal length, the word coordinate y, and the z. So similarly, we can come up with the x uh, image coordinate. So as you see, the, the, the y, x and y image coordinate are modulated by z. If the z is high, then x and y will be small. So that is a fact of life when you look at this kind of picture. So railway track, you know, these two tracks are parallel, but when you look at like this, they will appear to, the distance between them will appear to reduce and they actually will meet at infinity. So that is the perspective projection because these points which are away from you, then Z is modulating them and their X and Y is being reduced. So now another projection model is called orthographic projection where if you take a picture from say air, from an airplane, then the distance from the camera, and the scene is very, high, very large compared to sizes of objects. So we can, you know, we don't observe that uh, perspective there. So here's an example, if you take an overhead image like this, the roads, you know, pretty much appear, you know, parallel. So that's, you know, another model we look into that. So now the, what happens that Images are 2D. So as I talk about that we have a 2D array, a matrix or number that's an image. And uh, even in the human retina is 2D, but the world is 3D. So we human have capability to recover 3D from many different sources like um, stereo, motion, shading, texture, and contours to be able to perceive world in 3D and we can navigate, we can walk around and manipulate and so on. So that has been one big um, uh, problem in computer vision that we want to be able to do the same thing, recover 3D. And these methods are called shape from X. So 3D shape from any of those method X can be stereo or it can be motion and so on. So say you, we have two eyes, you know, left and right eye. So if you look at this um, picture, look at these billiards then we'll get two, two images, left image and right image. And the left image, which is um, shown here, uh, will be shifted compared to right image. You know, the blue is shifted compared to right image. And that shift is called disparity. And that actually gives us how far this object is from us. And, and that is uh, the way we, we do determine the 3D, that's one way. So, now this also we can show geometrically that how we can recover this 3D, the depth we will see. So here's a simple example, a geometry. So we have a point X, Y, Z, and we have two cameras, the left camera, which is lens is C1, and right camera C2. And this is image plane uh, for both. And then we have a separation between these two camera, which is called baseline is B, and the focal length of these both cameras F, so this point is Z distance from these camera. And the image of this point in here is formed here. And the image of this point in the right camera is formed here. So now again, we can look at there are two equivalent triangles. It's a big triangle and a small triangle. So we can use this uh, property to actually determine 
the C. So if you look at a uh, big triangle, so we have the altitude here Z plus F, so that's here, and the smaller triangle the altitude Z, so which is here, then the base of big triangle is X1 plus B plus X2, and the base of small triangle is B, so we can manipulate and we can say Z depends on the, inversely depend on the disparity, the difference between the image in left and right, and also the focal length and baseline. Typically the baseline is fixed and focal length is fixed, so it depends on this uh, disparity. So, um, so that we can do in computer also. And there are methods where, you know, given these two images, we can get a depth map. And these two other images, we can get a depth map like that. So another um, way we can recover 3D is called shading. And here we need only one image. So here there's a two images of the same model. One is without a makeup, other is with a makeup. So what happened when women do makeup? So actually the 3D shape of a face, which is perceived by human vision system, it is deceived. It perceives a much more pleasant, pleasant shape as compared to what it actually is. So you can apply shade of makeups to actually uh, look uh, better. And that's a, you know, fact of life. So now wh what we can do, that look at that, how these images are formed. So simple way, a simple model called Lambrantian model. So we have a surface here, and say we have a point here on the surface, and surface normal is in, and there's a light source S here, and the angle between the surface normal and light source is theta, and so the image we get intensity actually is proportional to dot product of these, the of this angle. And that's a very simple model how the image is formed. So now we can change the light source and actually synthetically generate the image of a base like this. Uh, as you see, the light source X is one, zero, one. So there's a shadow here. So this is you know, brighter here. And we change now minus one, minus one, one. So the shadow is this side and we get an image like that. So now once we know how the image is formed and if we know the light source in this thing, then we can, and if you know the image, then we can recover the 3D shape of surface normal. So that's one way we can find out the 3D shape from single image. The other way is we can find from texture. So assume there is a sheet of paper, you have these uh, circles of same radius, uh, which are uniform distributed. Now you uh, tilt this sheet of paper and the, what will happen as is shown here, the density of these circles will change depending on the orientation of the sheet of paper. And also these circles will appear like ellipses, their shape will change. So that tells you that you can recover actually 3D orientation of this depending on the looking at the texture, the, how the texture changes, how these the circles become ellipses and how the density changes. So that's another way we can do that. Uh, the final one is a motion, which is a very vivid way to recover 3D. And we use human beings use that very, very efficiently. So if you look at, when you look at these dots, you don't see anything here because these are you know, called moving like this plane. But when I start playing this thing, and it's very quickly, you will see there's a person walking. And that's a capability we have that we can use a motion to recover this 3D and we can say how this person got it. So we can do the same thing in uh, computer vision. We get a sequence of images and we can recover 3D shape and so on, okay? So now that's you know very general introduction. What are the kinds of things we can do in, in computer vision? So now I'm gonna talk about, uh, about our research. And um, so about our research, uh, I'll, I'll break this up into two parts. One will be the classical computer vision we have been using for you know, many decades. And other the recent interest uh, in what's called neural network or deep learning, uh, which is taking over lots of things we used to do, classical computer vision. So let's just start with the classical computer vision. So in this one, I'm gonna talk about a uh, big problem of object recognition. Uh, where we talk about image classification, 
object detection, human detection, body joint detection, and, and so on. So the second uh, topic is uh, video surveillance and monitoring, and that's a hot area. Uh, there we are going to look at a video, and that is you know we can do with fixed camera like surveillance video, or we can do a drone videos. And the third is I'll talk about the crowd analysis. So now, object recognition deals with um, question like finding people in image. So let's say, given an image I, uh, I want to ask that does I contain an image of a person? So that's problem you want to solve. Computer will have to solve that. So like this one, the computer will say yes. So all these pictures, each one of them contain image. So yes instance. And we'll say these images, no instance, there's no, no person. So that's one simple problem you want to solve uh, using computer. The uh, similarly, we can, computer will say these are airplanes, these are motorcycles. And then next problem is not only we want to answer yes or no, but we want to say if there's a person, then where it is. So we want to put a bounding box as we're showing here that while well, there's a person and it is here, there are two persons here and so on. So that's another uh, interesting problem, which is much more refined as compared to yes or no. So we did a work here uh, several years ago where we wanted to take the humans uh, from an aerial image, and which is very, very challenging. So when you take a picture from the air, these people appear very, very small, as you see here. It's very hard. Other thing is due to sun, there's a shadow. And so we want to avoid that. And we had this PhD student who did work and uh, you know, did pretty good work there. It worked pretty well. Um, second thing we can do is actually given a person, human, we want to detect the body joints. You know, and that's you know, also understanding of image. And uh, like a left arm, left elbow, right elbow, foot, you know, head and so on. So we had this work, uh, one of the students did that. So we given a video, we can actually recover, uh, detect these different joints. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's a very complex problem. And this is another you know, baseball um, action, which is much, much harder because the human is very articulation and there's a lot of difficulties here. So other thing we can do, uh, recognize faces. So these are the uh, movie trailers. So we have a database of these people we know, these actors. And so idea is detect a face and recognize you know, what that actor is. And um, if we don't know if that person is not there, then we'll say unknown. Um, and uh, that's also very important application of biometrics. So now video surveillance and monitoring, the idea is that we are given a video, uh, then we want to detect objects, track the objects from frame to frame, and we want to uh, re classify them as a person, a bicycle, or a car, and look at the activities. And that's a huge, big area, and the videos look like that. Um, so one project we did um, under the Homeland Security Grant that we look at this high resolution camera, uh, which is 360 field of view, and uh, we wanted to um, detect people and uh, track them. So this is around uh, Delta Terminal in Logan, uh, Boston Airport. So as you see, we can detect these people, each person has different ID and the color, then it's, uh, you know, we can track them where they enter, where they come from. So it's a pretty, pretty complex problem. Um, other recent things we have done is that while well, not only one camera, so we have multiple cameras. So this is a data set from Duke University. So they have eight camera on Duke campus. So first camera field of view is here. You can see people walking around here, then other cameras here and so on. And some are overlapping, some are not overlapping. So the idea is that, um, and it's a very large data set, eight cameras and two, more than two million frames and so on. It's about 3000 people uh, walking around. So what we want to be able to do, if we see a person uh, in one camera, can we re-identify that person in other camera? So here's an example. 
So we saw this person, which is uh, 714 ID in camera form. It entered here and exited here. Then we can identify that it went to camera seven. Again, we have same ID, it enters here and come here. Then after that, it went to camera five. So I think that is the de-identification tracking or multiple cameras. Um, so here's another example with the video. So here we are looking at um, um, the person 371. And so this person, uh, there are lots of people, but we want to track this 371. So it came camera six like that. And then um, the, he enters in camera five and we are able to have same ID. We know that same guy and uh, he exited that. Then he enters camera two uh, and we have same ID. So that's a you know pretty uh, complex problem and hope you're able to solve that. Okay, so other thing we do is look at these uh, drone videos because as you know, there are lots of drones um, and they have cameras and they get videos and these videos can be analyzed. So here's an example, it's actually IR video on the left and the drone is moving. So first is we need to compensate the global motion, but we want to then detect the moving car. So that's the vehicle here. We can detect the rest of the pixel when they are moving, we, we don't detect those. So that's a challenge. So once we detect those, then we can actually track those from frame to frame. Again, these cars have different ID, different color and uh, so related to that is what is called wide area surveillance. So that was one camera, but you know, if you want to cover a big area, so there's a, this um, six camera stitched together uh, looking at the big area. So this is the around Ohio State campus. There's a football stadium as you see here. Uh, this data set um, here. So we want to be able to uh, analyze this and uh, one thing we can do is we can track these vehicles. So as you see, there are many, many vehicles and even the vehicle is going under the bridge, we can actually have same ID. So it's color actually same, you know, the ID of that vehicle. So um, that's about the uh, video surveillance and monitoring. And other thing we can do is look at the crowds. Um, these are like political rallies, religious festival, marathon, and so on. And we want to analyze those. So one thing we have done is we want to detect people in the crowd. You know? Like here it is, you see there are lots of lots of people. So um, these is the ground truth. You know, we want the computer, we are given a picture, they want to put a bounding box on every person. It's a very challenging task. So now, um, the, if you look at what we have for this one, so one is that we can, um, when we detect, so one problem is we'll have false negatives, which are shown in green here, which means our computer algorithm was not able to detect those, even though there were people, but we said, no, there's no person. The other error is what's shown in the black, which is a false positive. We say there's a person, but actually there's no person. And this is a true positive. So we can do pretty good, but still we have some false negatives. So other thing we can do is uh, look at the videos and then we can, you know, lots of people, we can track you know, each person, particular person we are interested in. And this is even harder for you know, humans to do that, very complicated. Uh, other thing crowds we can do, we can count people, how many people are there in the, in the image. So let's say this picture, we ask uh, undergraduate students to put a dot on each person and we counted there were 634 people. So we give this to a computer and computer told us there are 640, you know, which is pretty good because if asked a human it will take a long time to actually count these people. So now we have computer program which can tell us. So another example here we have 1428, that's a ground truth and we say it's about 1460, I think it's you know, pretty close. And another example, again here, we can do pretty good. So that's a crowd counted. Okay, so uh, now let me uh, talk about the second part of uh, our research, which is recent research. 
and um, so that is uh, deals with the um, deep learning or the neural networks. So um, in classical computer vision, what we used to do, we will, given a problem, we will come up with handcrafted features. You as a designer or researcher will say, well, let's do this and you write a program to you know, come up with that. Um, so we have expert knowledge, you know, how the human look like and what the car looks like and we can put in constraint. We will have objective function and then we optimize objective function and so on. Now, deep learning uh, is that it's motivated by how human actually do learn to recognize that there's a, a person, there's a car, there's a dog and so on. So, uh, and so that's why it uses neural networks. Um, so it has real learning. In the previous approach, is not necessarily we were doing learning. Um, and, but the problem here is that most of the work is supervised learning. So we need to have label um, and annotation, which give to, we give the computer and it can uh, learn that one. You give lots of a dog and you tell it it's a dog and dog and we train it and next time we give it another image of a dog and say it's a dog. So, uh, and it requires a lot of computation and uh, that is uh, why we are using GPUs, graphical processing unit, and uh, that is a massively parallel processing. We can analyze things very quickly. So, and the optimization method very simple, just statistic gradient descent. So that has resulted what is called artificial intelligence revolution because computer vision is part of AI. How can we make system, artificial system intelligent? So perception is one part of intelligence, okay? So, um, so you may have heard about that AlphaGo um, was a program for DeepMind in London, um, the company owned by Google um, can beat the, you know, champion, a world champion in the Go, game of Go. It's a very complex game. It was a big, uh, big news, uh, you know, two, three years ago, uh, using AI, artificial intelligence. Um, then the, there are different tools from um, Google, which can surpass the human experts. Um, and there are many tasks which these humans are growing number of tasks. So uh, also it is impacting you know, all these different areas, the customer service and so on. So one, the killer application is a self-driving cars. So you will have these cars will self-drive and the vision, computer vision is one important part. Because they have sensor, they will look at, if there are people they want to stop and how they turn the roads and all those things. So, so all these companies, you know, are investing a lot of money in the computer vision and the self-driving car. So like Ford is um, uh, planning to get something next year um, and um, all the big automakers, uh, China, almost every company in China is doing self-driving car. Um, so the other thing is that um, Tesla, you know, has this, um, some of this, um, computer vision system called Mobileye from a company in Israel by this famous professor, uh, computer vision professor, Amnon Shashwa. Um, and then the Intel bought his company for $15 billion. You know? So that's, you know, can tell you the, how important is computer vision. So, you know, people have said even, this is a famous quote from professor from Stanford, the AI is a new electricity. Because AI is impacting, including computer vision and robotics and, uh, you know, the natural language processing and so on, impacting everything. And like electricity was a big revolution, change the civilization. So AI is going to play something like that. So now the driving force for that has been what's called convolutional neural network. So this is a class of neural network, uh, which takes the input as an image and make prediction about the input image. So here is the example. So we have image here, and these are the different layers, convolutional layers. 
and it will take the image and apply these filters and lots of these filters and different layers. And at the end, we will train this. Uh, for example, so when I will recognize the bird, a sunset, a dog, a cat, and we are given a label, given an image, we know it's label, and this will predict the label and we'll compare the ground truth label and what predicts and that will be a loss and we will learn these filters in order to minimize that loss and that's the main idea that's in learning so supervised learning so um so you know there are these different networks and this became big news in 2012 that it amazingly performance you know very very low low error for this benchmark it was it used to be 26 percent now it's 15 percent uh, now it is you know in 2012 but now it has gone to one percent actually it's better than uh, humans so now the main thing difference uh, is neural network is one is called the simple um the neural neurons which is called the uh, perceptron so we have here an input and these are the neurons, then another layer of neurons and so on. So these are the weights we will learn. So, but this is not possible for the image because the image is big, you know, there are lots of these uh, uh, pixels. So therefore, what we use is called convolutional neural network. And we, are, we apply these filters all over the image, same filter, and that makes a big difference. So, um, so now given that, so I'm going to talk about what we have been doing using this deep learning approach uh, last uh, few, uh, few years. So I'm going to talk about human re-identification, uh, multi-object detection and aerial videos, anomaly detection and human action detection and robot manipulation. So this is work we had um, 2018 in the CVPR. And so the idea here is we are given a query image and we have a database and we want to find out the people who are similar to this person, same person. So essentially we we'll go through the database and there are lots of images and search and come up with the top say 10 and rank them. This is the best match, the so next best match and so on. The green one are correct one and the, and the red one are wrong, you know. Um, so because we know we have a ground truth. So the challenges are, you know, the person can look like that, elimination condition is bad, or discovering with umbrella, or there is, you know, different posture, or, you know, here's a background clutter and occlusion. So it's a very complex problem. So we had this uh, method using neural network and which is able to solve this. And so this is a data set. We have about 13 and 16 different people, six cameras. And um, so we can solve this pretty good. So given the image here, so our system will say, this is the same, all these people are same. And these are all correct, we verify. So another example, look at it's pretty, pretty difficult image here. And we can still match with this guy and the same guy and so on. So here we have a couple of mis uh, detection. This is incorrect, the red one, and so on. Here's the last one and so on. But as far as if you can do top five or top three, correct one, which is pretty good. So another uh, thing we have here is looking at the drone videos. So here we have these um, vehicles um, and each vehicle is basically a dot and we want to detect those vehicles uh, in, a, in a drone video. So this is a data set from Air Force Research Lab. And uh, we have about um, 2.4 million vehicles in just 1,000 frames. And um, so we, again, this is a deep learning. So we have these kind of videos, and this is a ground truth. So somebody sit down and put a dot on those vehicles which are there. So using that, then we build this neural network. We look at say three images and we go through different layers of this neural network. And then output is where we think 
the vehicle, uh, these are the vehicles here. Um, so these are the different receptive fields. So like we get uh, results like this. So here the, the green one is the ground truth and the circle one is the correct one. So we see that we can do pretty well and we can look at the qualitative and you know, quantitative results, precision recall. So this is our curve, we do much better than other methods. So more example here. Um, so this is a very complex problem because it's so small each vehicle, uh, okay? So next thing, we have a method, we can detect anomaly. Um, so as you know, I mean, there are so many cameras and so many hours of videos and there's nobody to watch them. So how can we automatically analyze and look at anomaly? You know, that there are, most of the time there's nothing happening, it's everything normal, but we want to look at these, you know, criminal activities like abuse, uh, arson, arrest, burglary, and so on. So we have a method that we want to come up with computer program, neural network, which signal when there is a deviation from normal patterns. So anomalous events are there's an accident or illegal activity, and um, anomalous events actually rarely occur. So our approach is that we want to learn anomalies by exploring both normal and anomalous video. And, but we don't want to annotate because we don't want to go through all the videos say where is anomaly, where is not anomaly. But we want to do this, what is called multiple instant learning in that we are given a video, we are told there is anomaly somewhere, but we don't know where. And there are other videos we are given where there's no anomaly. So we have these two sets of video and we learn that automatically. So these are the qualitative results. So they, whenever there's a kind of anomaly, so this function is going to give us a very high. You know, as you see here, like a abuse, there was a um, dog being abused. It's another one, explosion. So we can find out, you know, where is anomaly happening? And uh, there's a road accident. So again, we can find out the shooting. <clears throat> and uh, so this is a normal video. So it's just, you know, store uh, going, uh, we are playing fast, it may appear abnormal, but it's just a normal video. So um, other thing we can do is we can actually detect and recognize actions. You know. so let's say we have these videos and we can say, this is the biking, this is the tennis swing, long jump and so on. And so that's just yes or no. This one is that we can say that well, there's a diving, but we also know where is the diving happening? Where is the actor? So then third one is that we can actually do pixel wise segmentation that we can tell that this is a golf swing, but we can come with the green pixels because that's more precise, more finer segmentation. So we have this neural network to do that. And um, so we can get results like that. So here the green is ground truth. So we want to come up with as close as possible ground truth. We want to put a bounding box. Uh, our results are very as you see, they are very good. They are very tight. Different actions. Uh, this is another data set. Uh, again, we do pretty good. Uh, different actions. Uh, we can also do segmentation. So, given the video, we can segment very nicely uh, these objects uh, using computer program like that. Okay. So. Other thing we can do is use the computer vision in robotics. So the input is say, we have a sentence, say push the white plate from left to right. We tell this to robot and we want to be able to robot to do that. Okay, so this uses computer vision and robotics also. So um, 
So the, our experimental setup is that we first record demonstration. So this is imitation learning. So we tell how to do the robot. We record these uh, different activities. So here, as you see, uh, push the uh, demonstration pushing task. Um, and um, so we'll have lots of sequences like this. And uh, so we'll have the video recorded and the joint angles of the robot. And then we train the network and then you are test on real robot. So here's the example. Now here the input sentence is pick up blue wing. So robot is going to do that automatically. All these, uh, this is uh, input push the red ball to the right. So it's going to do it. So it's looking at the video, analyzing these are input image and generated image and so on, different steps, and uh, it's going to do these things. So now the um, the other thing is the main contribution we have here is the typical method will have problem with this step. So as you see, this is student is putting his hand, so robot is going haywire. It's not able to do that. The command is push the red box from the left to right. It, it, it never does that. So now what we have on method actually will deal with the step. So it's able to do it because using the attention. So which is you know which is good. Um, so another example here. Uh, pick up that white towel. And uh, so as you see, when there's disturbance, it's not able to deal with it. And uh, then here, using our method, um, we are able to do that. So so I think that's, that's what I have. So before I end, so I want to um, show you our um, website. We have a lot of information there. Uh, if you click here, so you will see um, the um, the um, I don't know how to do that, um, but in you you yeah I think it's coming up. So are you able to see this uh, CRCV uh, web page? MJ, do you see that? I see the center. Oh, I... You, you don't you don't see you see the slides. I see okay. the slides. Yes. Okay. So, but you don't see the the center for research and computer vision. No. Okay. So maybe I think I need to. Uh, but but let maybe let's just uh, stop that because we are getting. It. So so these links are there. Um, so other thing is we have this YouTube um, uh, channel for CRCV also, and um, uh, that has lots of, um, um, lots of um, information. Uh, let me try to see if I can share this screen. Uh, just one, okay. So where is the new share? Okay, so let's do that. Um, let me do here, YouTube. Okay. Um, so do you guys see now uh, YouTube? Um, see a blank, uh, black screen on the left. Uh, do you see this one? The uh, YouTube uh, Center for Recent Computer yeah. Vision? Right. Okay, good. So that's what I was wanted to say. So we have lots of um, information on the YouTube. So one is that um, I have my whole course on computer vision, uh, 18 lectures. Uh, if students want to, you know, uh, know more about computer vision, they can look at that. So this is computer vision, UCF computer vision 2012. And this is the UCF Computer Vision 2014. So this is all the okay. lectures and much more detail about what I talk about and people can look at that. 
The other is that all our uh, the um, doctoral defenses are there. Now this is uh, different uh, students. Um, Good morning, everyone. Uh, you know, PhD defense is there. And then also uh, we have other papers, like all the papers I talk about, you will find the presentation uh, there. So that is one thing. And other is um, the uh, our web page. Uh, here we have a courses. We have undergraduate course, Robot Vision, which is offered uh, every fall and spring. And students can take that. And we have, of course, graduate level course, uh, Computer Vision 5415. And also we have lots of um, um, pub, you know, project pages. So anything they're interested in, um, they can look at this uh, thing like a pose estimation I talk about. So that paper I discussed, you know, it's, it's here. And um, so this one. And um, so, so that's what I have. So, you know, if there are any questions we can, I can answer, but I think we are kind of, we have a few more minutes. I think uh, we've, uh, we're done with our schedule time. If anybody yeah. Has, yeah, okay, go ahead. Do you have a question? Yeah, I cannot cannot hear. Can you turn on the um, audio, your microphone? Who is talking? Um, probably, I think not. Somebody, you saw MJ, somebody was asking question? I thought I heard somebody in the background, but uh, okay. I see chat too uh, good up down the bottom. I'm not sure if that. Uh, anything um, looks good. That was just the comments we had before. Well, I yeah. think everybody's probably bailing because people have another class coming up. Yeah, it's uh, ten thirty. I want to thank you again, Mubarak, for uh, uh, giving this lecture. Uh, certainly, there's a lot of overlap, uh, as strange as it might seem, between computer vision and and human vision. All the concepts that you use to determine depth, we studied in this course and. Um, the only difference is you have better control over uh, how the processing, the processing is done. Uh, we're stuck with the brain that we have when it processes the Well, the good news is it does it automatically. Uh, the bad news is we have no control over it. So, uh, but there are a lot of similarities uh, with what's done, in, as one might expect, I guess, computer vision and uh, human vision. So. I uh, just want to thank you again and uh, ask you if you could send me a PDF of your slides, that would be great. Yeah, I think I already sent you. MJ, you can okay. check. I already sent you before around 9 o'clock. Okay, good. No, you can I'll check it again, yeah. Yeah. I'll put it on our uh, uh, class website. So if you can follow it over as well as you can. <clears throat> and they can copy and uh, paste those uh, web addresses that you had at the end yeah. into their browser and see the videos and stuff. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, All right. Let's stop here. Okay. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Yeah.